Uh, my name is Cecilia Rigi. I am a team lead for the Protein Information Resource, uh, which is uh, one of the institutions that is part of Unipro Consortium. And I'm going to describe here today the community curation effort that uh, I'm spearheading. Um, based the, the title of this talk is Contributing to the Uniprod Knowledge Base and how you can help. Um, I'm going to turn off my camera for this part and then at the end I will uh, return it so it's better for, the, for all the uh, videos and things that I'm going to show. Okay, so let's get started. Um, sorry. So the universe, the protein information, uh, sorry, the universal uh, protein resource or UniProt is a high quality and freely accessible resource for protein sequence and functional annotation. It is a collaboration between three uh, institutions, the protein information resource in the US, at, both at Georgetown and the uh, University of Delaware, uh, the European uh, Bioinformatics Institute in the UK, and uh, the uh, Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in uh, Switzerland. So UniProt has uh, different databases that cater different needs. On one hand, we have uh, UniPark, which is uh, the archive, contains most of publicly available sequences and is non-redundant. Then we have the knowledge base or UniProt KB, which is the core database and I'm going to explain more in the next slide. Um, UniREF provide clusters of sequence at different levels of identity. Um, the proteomes presents the protein sets at organism level. Then we have a, lo a lot of supporting data. Among it is the literature, which we are going to talk about the literature citations. Um, and then we offer tools for searching and analyzing the sequences as well as data downloads and programmatic access. So in terms of the knowledge base, which is, our, as I mentioned, the core database, uh, it is composed of two sections. Uh, one is uh, tremble or unreviewed. And this section is, uh, these numbers, as you see, is for uh, release uh, 2021-02, the current release. So this is the number of entries in this section. Um, and this is the number of entries in SUSPOT. So you can see majority of the sequences of the entries are in the Tremble section. This is automatically annotated. Um, more than 90%, 95% of the sequences uh, provided by Uniper are derived from the translation of coding sequences which have been submitted to a public nucleic acid database. Um, all these sequences, as well as the data submitted by the authors are automatically integrated into Tremble. Uh, when uh, the information um, in Tremble um, is looked by an uh, expert, like our curators in Uniprod, then these are promoted to the SUISPROD um, or review section. Uh, these are the high quality annotated set, which is non-redundant in terms that one, there's only one entry for one gene in one species or strain. Uh, sometimes in bacteria, you see strains. And um, there's cross-reference with a lot of um, different databases. And also um, there is both literature and sequence curation. What type of information uh, do we uh, look into collect for a protein entry? We annotate a, a functional. So in the Uniper entries, you usually see certain topics that are in blue if there we contain some information. And these are basically uh, summarized here. There's a lot of functional annotation going on. Um, names, we annotate a lot of uh, collect uh, names are very comprehensive and we try to standardize the recommended name. Uh, we provide identifiers which are unique and stable. We also, um, curate the sequence, so we identify isophones, variants, and so on. Uh, there's also a lot of information about amino acid uh, level data or regions, uh, so we annotate a lot of features in the sequence and their uh, characteristics, and many, many links to specialized databases. So if you don't find information in Unipro, you can link out to other databases to uh, look for more information. 
So uh, the literature curation uh, in Uniprod involves, um, it's very key uh, to, to, the, to this database because uh, it re Uniprod KB, um, the, the Swiss prod section serves as a gold standard for many applications. Uh, while we're doing uh, Uniprod uh, literature curation, um, either for an update or for creating a new entry, like saying from Tremble to Suisprot, a curator has to um, digest or summarize the information from the literature. Um, and also uh, he performs some, I say he, and it should be the user is indistinctive of, a per, of gender, um, should um, go over uh, um, the sequence analysis as well as the literature review. And this information is uh, put in the Uniper entry in many times as free text or standard formats. And then uh, you see in the entry, again, these can be, uh, or these are organized in different topics. However, you saw that the, the size of uh, Swiss prod is a small in comparison to Tremble. Uh, Uniprod has a finite curation task force um, and expert curation activity is, has some prioritization in terms of organisms and in terms of um, sometimes uh, are based on certain things. The set of articles supporting the annotations is just a selection summarizing the knowledge about the protein at a given time. And I provide a publication which explains the process by which we select the publications. So don't think that because the publication is not there, it doesn't mean that we haven't looked. Sometimes we have uh, to select a subset of everything. Users uh, request for publications and information to be added. So we, we do receive a lot of, we have been receiving in the past, a lot of requests for adding publications and information because they don't find it in the, in the entry. And then uh, we, we find that there's a need to, fight, uh, to provide a fast response to critical topics. For example, for COVID, uh, we need uh, to provide knowledge that is up to date. And Uniper has taken steps in terms of the COVID-19 created a special page with we have been uh, providing um, curated uh, very, which is up to date and is uh, independent of the release cycle. So people can have access to the information. But uh, to help in this endeavor, uh, we created um, additional ways or tried to find additional ways to integrate literature and annotations from other sources. And we call this additional bibliography. So to expand the access to published knowledge about the protein, Uniprod includes uh, these additional publications and um, by uh, bringing uh, publications from external sources and also from the community. And we also, uh, to help navigate and uh, improve discovery, uh, we classify these publications into the entry annotation topics. So this is the page. Usually when you go to an entry page, uh, in this case is this protein sperm associated antigen five. I just choose one that have all sources of annotations. Um, you always go to, if, I don't know if you ever noticed this display section where you, the default is to show the entry. However, there's a link to publications and this publication section will list all the publications that are associated with this entry but there are different sources for such publications. And you can see uh, it here. So one of the sources of course is Unipro. So in this case, because this is a review entry, all the publications have been annotated and you can see that they are cited for different aspects, function, interaction, subcellular location, uh, and so on. Um, there's also, um, computational additional ones that I mentioned, which come from computational map uh, resources and the community, which we're going to talk today. Also, as I mentioned, there's um, a way to 
filter the, by annotation topics. So for example, if you're interested in PTMs, uh, post translation modifications, which would be PTMs, uh, you can click here to see the eight publications. Some of them might come from Uniprot uh, curation, some of them might come from other sources. So you have a better idea of uh, what is all the information out there. So I'm going to explain very briefly uh, the sources and the number statistics of our computational map bibliography. So our sources are curated and text mining uh, sources. Uh, here is the list and you can see a lot of model organism databases as well as pathways, uh, post-translation and modification structure. Uh, these are two um, text mining uh, methods. Uh, then we have for mutations, interactions, and disease. So we get not only the publications, but also some annotations associated with them. So it's a very collaborative effort with these resources. And that's why it's not that it's a, a infinite list of resources where we get information because it's a coordination with this uh, resource to get the information in the, in the right format for Unipro. So we really appreciate their uh, effort. And we also um, characterize, uh, categorize, sorry, using a deep learning method called AppClass uh, for uh, doing multi-class classifications because each paper may um, belong to different uh, topics. Um, and here we have the numbers of the current release, which is uh, 2021-02. As you see, we have majority of the publications have some category assigned. So more recently, uh, we decided uh, to expand these um, annotations and literature by engaging the community. So why? Because you have the expertise, you can help scaling up curation, for example, for those organisms for which uh, maybe Unibird has not uh, is uh, the priority uh, right now um, or to bring some important updates. And also, yeah, I put you us for it because we did receive, we have been receiving a lot of uh, requests, a high demand on um, adding publications and annotations to their favorite entries or proteins of users. So it's just that that's why we think this mechanism is, is very convenient because it allows the user to contribute and uh, provide and at the same time help us scaling up curation. The benefits, the recognition for the papers and annotations you contribute, the contribution is citable and can be used as a deliverable of your research. So you can say, I published many papers. I also contributed this many uh, papers to Uniprod and annotations. And you, you, I will show you how to show that. And you can play an active role in improving the database because later these uh, annotations may be picked up by some curation and added to the entry, but you still will receive in your credit. And an improved database is the database, sorry, uh, better supports the research community. So you, it's kind of a positive feedback cycle. The important thing to note is that you don't need to be the author to contribute a publication. Any recognition we give is for you being able to associate that paper to the protein and add it the annotation. So here is the same, uh, the same entry in the publication, but now it is filtered by the community. And you can see there are three publications and these publications have a source. We use ORCID and I'm gonna explain in a moment what it is. And there's some annotation that has been added by the user in terms of protein name, function, and that's it in this case. So we can also access this information from the community curation link that it appears in the entries that have community curation. So this will be show up in any place in the entry. So you will know when you go to that entry that there's some curation information from the community. And when you click there, you get to a page to our community bibliography submission page where for this protein, and you can see the three submissions. In this case, it's the same user 
but you can see with a, a little bit better, um, you have coloring to distinguish the different types of annotations and you can gather more information and you can download this in a table format. So I'm gonna ask you a question. So Anna, can you run this first poll? Uh, did you know about the different publication sources in Uniprod? Basically, they curated uh, those from external resources and the community prior to what I just explained in this seminar. If you can answer uh, that question quickly, um, I can gather this information. So, and I leave it to you to close the voting. Okay, I think we'll close that now. Mm -hmm. And we'll okay. check the results. Okay, so I'm, a, I'm happy that I'm 78% didn't know, so I'm giving you something new that now you know the different sources and you can uh, better investigate, explore the information there. Uh, so maybe we can close it now. So let's go over the system overview um, and then we go into the details so you understand how, how this works. So let's say you have, you, the user has a publication that wants to associate to a Uniprod entry. So you go to the entry and add, click on add a publication. Then you're asked to sign in with your ORCID. Um, then you will fill in a submission form, which is very simple. You'll see in a moment, there's some checking going on at the time of submission. And also then for, by a reviewer in, in the Uniprod team takes a look at your input and will communicate with you if there's any question. Um, once it is checked, the publication is integrated in the additional bibliography for the Uniprod release and will be visible um, on the website. Oh, one of the things with your ad credit and attribution as we saw. Uh, but one of the things that is important to know is that once the annotation has been checked, it shows up in the community curation 24 to 48 hours after that. So that means that there's no tie to the release. You don't have to wait eight weeks or four weeks depending on the, what, what time we're talking about. But uh, currently release are eight weeks. So you don't have to wait for eight weeks or even more for see the output of your um, submission. You can get it, I mean, it's tied to the review process, but that's it. I talked about ORCID and for those who are not familiar, this is a unique identifier for researchers. Um, and we use it to verify your identity and give you recognition for your work. Um, the good thing about using this is that you are in control or your profile. So we only link to your ORCID profile and ORCID is being requested. I mean, it's, be, it's being used by many, many uh, different institutions or different resources. So it's widely used at this time. And um, if you, we link to your profile, you decide what you want to show. You may only show um, just your name. You may show your name, title, and your publications, or whatever you want. So that's up to you. We just uh, provide the link to that. So this is a snapshot of the submission form uh, where the first part is about the Uniper entry, right? Since you come from a Uniper entry, this part is autofill, so you don't have to do anything. The next part is to add the publication and make sure that what you retrieve is correct. Um, and then uh, there's a section where you kind of classify the topics. What aspect does the publication describe about the protein? Um, we also collect names. So if the, uh, be mindful that when we add these uh, publications uh, to an entry, we always think entry centric. So protein centric, sorry. So if you, uh, the paper talks about three proteins, we only add the information about the protein we are in the entry. So uh, then it's the same for names and for function, and also disease for any disease information, aspects of disease, or any other annotation like subcellular location expression. Then we ask uh, that you provide your contact information, which is only for the purpose of communicating with you that we found some 
issue with the, your submission, not to be shared with the public. However, we do share the ORCID ID. If you prefer to stay anonymous, you have to switch it to anonymous, but in that way you will lose uh, that ability to cite your uh, contributions. Once we receive your submissions, uh, we ensure that the content is appropriate. There is a review process, and this is it's not very um, thorough in terms that is not a, a, like a QA that we do in the Swiss product curation, but it's, we make sure that things are okay. So ensure the content is appropriate, that only facts related to the protein as described in the publication are shown and not personal opinions. Um, my, we do minor edits for to correct typos, grammar, and some standardization, but also because we use US spelling. So if you use British, we just have to switch it. Um, and then any other change in terms of content, we make sure that we do it only with the submitter's permission. So we have a way when you submit that you can track the status of your submission and there are different, uh, and you have the link there. Uh, and these are the different status tags. Um, when you submit, the entries are under reviewed. I call under reviewed status. And these are not publicly available. So you have to sign in with your ORCID to see it, only the submitter and the reviewer from the Uniprot side will be able to check this. And um, I, sorry, this got cut. So basically, the, the submission has not been reviewed by Uniprot and will only be seen by uh, the, the submitter. The checked means that the, the reviewer already approved the submission. So this will be um, available in the public uh, curation community link uh, once it is like 24 to 48 hours after it is uh, checked. When it is public, when it is the release time and it gets into the additional bibliography, now it will be available not only for the community curation link, but also in the publication section of the entry. There's another category, which is drop, which means sometimes the submission is found inappropriate uh, for some reason. But we do communicate this with the users and agree that it's incorrect, for example, association of the paper to an entry, that could be a case. So in terms of statistics, so we started very small. We started in 2019-08 release. Um, this was a very a pilot with seven users, uh, which were really people we knew uh, that we want them to test the system and, and go over the, the activity. They provided a total of 29 submissions. And now uh, in the release that we have in preparation, currently we are in 2021-02, but now in the release that we are in preparation, we have 2,604 submissions, uh, which covers um, 2,192 prote unique proteins uh, from uh, 752 publications and from 313 users. So this has been um, an active uh, activity, we're very happy because we do see users that come over and over to provide information. And also, um, uh, we, we've seen a steady grow and we know that people discover the other uh, publication and they try that we, we run a survey and that's how they found it. So this is uh, by topic. So you can see that there's a lot of publications that add information on the function or, or in things that have to do with pathology and biotech, which are mutations, variants, and, um, and so on. And then by taxonomy, in this release in preparation, there is like a batch, uh, a batch uh, submission of human proteomic data. So this is, that's why eukaryotic became larger. And important thing is that one example of how this has an impact on the annotation is that from those entries, when, when I check and search for and characterize in the protein name in Uniprot for the one submitted, we have 438 that have some annotation coming from the community. So that means that you go to that unreview entry, which it has an uncharacterized name, and you go to community curation, and there will be some 
publication and annotation, giving you some additional information. So one aspect that always um, is important to note is that uh, it's not just finding the correct protein name, but also assign the correct species to be able to link to the correct database. If you're the author of the publication, that's fine. You, I hope you know what you're working with, uh, which is of course the, usually the case. Um, but if you're not the author, sometimes there's, we, we've seen these are the most common issue. So one question, um, Anna, if you could run the second poll, do you feel uh, comfortable or confident in the task of mapping a protein mentioned in a publication to a unit entry? When you see a, a good number, okay. All right. So I, I'm glad that people uh, are confident or a little bit confident about doing it. Some people are not. I'm going to show in the next few slides some uh, tactics or tips to find things or issues you may encounter. One of them is if you have a publication. Uh, and that publication provides some kind of ID identifier. Here are examples on the right about, this is a PDB structure identifier, and this is for a complex. Um, there's also here another publication which lists an identifier from GeneBank for uh, some protein and or gene. And, and here is the a Unipron accession also, which is easier. So if we have any ID, that is a good starting point because we can use uh, the ID mapping retrieval in Uniprod to map to um, the Uniprod entry. This is a quite reliable method for mapping because if you find a map, a match, that, that's probably yeah, almost uh, right, that is fine. Uh, the only thing is that sometimes mappings can give you not just the fantastic one-to-one -one mapping, but it can give you one-to-many. Like in the example of a PDB for a complex, you have many proteins in a complex. So the PDB ID, when you do the mapping to Uniprod, you will find many uh, protein entries. So you know which one you are annotated, so you should pick the correct one. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is sometimes you get multiple um, entries uh, as a result of a mapping because the, let's say, for example, it's not gonna happen with this one, but let's say this one maps back to uh, many or, or some identifier maps to many Uniprod and one are all for the same protein basically, but it's just the redundancy of the database, the nature is that you, we have to pick one. Uh, I always ask you if there's a review one, pick the review one to add the information. So here is the retrieve and ID mapping in case you didn't know. I'm using as an example, the second one, which is a gene bank. So basically you paste the accession and you say from gene bank to Unipron. And there's a long list here of identifiers that you can check. And then here is a nice example where there's only one one-to-one -one mapping. So we, we know it's about this protein. So I can go and click on this protein and add the publication. Another thing that we can uh, find in the publications are proteins or gene name. Um, one of the things you, in this case, I'm showing uh, that MBP uh, is the same name for different proteins in this case. MBP could be major basic protein, myelin basic protein, or man and binding protein. And so you, this, even within one organism, you could have multiple meanings for the same acronym or abbreviation. So just be careful when you search to make sure that you are getting the right thing. Look at the context and you are the expert. So, you know, I'm, I'm just probably um, preaching to, <laughs> it's, 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 but just in case. So if you have gene names in particular, you could use the ID mapping, uh, also support gene names uh, mapping, uh, or you can do the text search uh, with a name and the organism remember to include the organism in order to identify the correct entry. And again, and if you get many hits that for the same thing, 
but one of them is review. Just pick the review one to add the information. Another thing that could uh, find you could find are sequences or subsequences. In this case, uh, these are two uh, see the C terminal sequence of two isoforms of TRPV1 um, protein. And the, here there's another a peptide from the spike protein or this other sequence where this bold uh, series are phosphorylated in that publication, if you read. And we could use that information uh, to map to Uniprod. You can use the peptide search or the BLAST. For peptide search, uh, this is a reliable method. If you match the entry and you know the organism, you will be able probably, unless the, the sequence is very redundant, uh, then it's not that reliable. But I assume in the context of the paper help you, uh, this is a good method as well. So. If you have like a peptide or a short sequence, you can use the peptide search. This gives you identical matches. And if not, you can use BLAST. Um, and one other thing that I wanted to point out about the sequences in the publication is that uh, you can have, um, sometimes you have a, a protein that you identify by searching the name in Uniprod. But the paper describes some aspect. Let's say there's a phosphorylation on a particular serin and has a number and you can see the context. So you can see if that matches the sequence in the entry to kind of corroborate your mapping. So this is an example. If you go to Uniprod and click on peptide search, you can actually put multiple peptides and we give you as a result and the organism and we'll give you as a result the the output with the matched region. So here we have the short, this will be the short isoform and the long isoform for this particular paper. So another again, another quick poll. Did you know about the different ways to map a protein gene to Uniper entry? Okay, so hopefully I gave you some tips uh, to help you uh, to find that, even if it's not for this community uh, annotation thing, uh, you can, you know now that these uh, different ways of looking at the entries uh, or publication uh, names and sequences. You can close, okay, thank you. So now, you have your submissions, and I'm going to show you later oh, how to do this. But once you have your submissions, you can use this. Uh, this is a generic link here. You put your ORCID, where you can um, use the same way you use your Google Scholar or for linking to your profile with all your publications you, or my your NCBI um, li library or bibliography. Uh, you can cite your contributions. Here is an example of my contributions. Um, here, these are all mine. If you click here, this is me. And these are all examples that I've been using uh, while doing these things. Um, and you can download. And if you download, you get the information. I I'm sorry. And if we go over this, you can see that you have the Uniper accession. It tells us if the protein is review or unreview. And this is regarding the Uniprod, whether it has been curated or not. So this one, for example, is adding some information that uh, is an to an unreviewed entry. So probably this would be an interesting thing to look at if we are interested in, in this project. And you can download all the, all the publications. It will, uh, I'm sorry, it will show up. I hopefully, I'm, okay, let me do it from scratch. Uh, download result. Okay, here it is. So this one, it will show uh, the contribution. Uh, sorry, this is the format we use for the additional bibliography. So usually it's the accession, the source, in this case is ORCID, but could be a, a, for other bibliography source could be a different one the PubMed ID, in this case, the ID of the submitter, and this is all the annotations. 
So you can you could parse this if you want, and you can do this for all the information in the bibliography, not just for yours. So let me go back to the. So I'm going to show you now. I'm going to uh, list a number of contributions we have uh, highlighted because these has been projects that really would benefit from using this. One is annotation of protein uh, from Giardia intestinalis or Giardia lamia, which is an eukaryotic parasite that uh, produce diarrhea um, in humans and other animals. And um, this uh, organism is, uh, we have very little annotated in Unipro, but however, there's quite a bit of literature around. So I contacted um, a group in Argentina who is a lab that works on Giardia and, uh, and this uh, lab started annotating these proteins. And also by disseminating the information, we also capture another uh, lab in uh, Georgetown University who has used uh, this mechanism to tell the students to annotate Giardia proteins. So we have, for, I think right now, 51 submissions. We started re this very recently. The same with annotation of hierarchical proteins. Uh, we, there's a group in Germany, Dr. Uh, Friedel Pfeiffer, who has been submitted an enormous amount of submissions for adding information about these uh, proteins. So these are like mini collaborate, in a way some, these are like collaborations because they, we are uh, exchanging information and, and discussing how to do this. The same with batch submissions of proteomic data. So that this last release, this upcoming release, uh, will have a number of submissions which have been submitted in a separate file with a lot of information uh, for proteomics that are high confidence. And I introduced this in uh, my course uh, as a project because the students go and characterize uh, a mystery protein and if they find a literature that supports a function, I ask them to add it to this uh, community. So I'm going to go for the demo very quickly. Um, this is um, something that is kind of pre-recorded in a way. So let me uh, find. So when you submit, um, I'm basing this example on the Vampire Bats uh, TRPV1 isoforms. There's this publication offers information about the sequences, expression, and uh, function of these two isoforms. So we're going to try to add this information in Uniprod. So as we saw before, uh, this uh, publication um, in the full text, they describe, they have these uh, C-terminal uh, sequences of the isoforms. So we can use this as a guide to uh, find uh, via peptide search, the adding the, the organisms to find the corresponding protein. This is the vampire bat. So I, we can start typing that and see uh, what is the, the right um, taxon uh, to select. And then we run the peptide search and we get two entries. One of them is the short and one is the long. And note that this should be one entry if these were curated, but these are unreviewed. So this one, this one is uh, a short form. And here we have the link to other publication and you can see this unreview and there's not uh, much information other than automatic things that have been uh, imported. Now let's click on other publication. We, um, we can see in this uh, bibliography page that we have access to uh, the community submissions. So we can link, see all the community submissions if we click there. Uh, we have help and um, frequently asked questions as well. And we also have a link to a demo that is not showing up there. So we also have to use ORCID. So if you don't have information about, you don't have an ORCID, you can check there. So let's sign in. And when you sign in with your email and password, again, if you're not registered, you can click there and register. The first time it'll ask you something uh, to accept something, but later it's just direct. Now we make sure that what, whatever we retrieve is a correct protein. I told you this is a it's out of field. We have the PubMed ID. So we have to go to our publication and add the PubMed ID. 
and I already read all the publications, so and I summarized the information. So for time reasons, right? So first thing is to make sure that this is the publication we want. Sometimes copy paste, we make an error. So we just confirm that. And also that the protein and organism is what we also intend to annotate. Yes, it is, just we can move forward. The next thing is to provide the information. What are the things that the paper talks about? We know that the experimental findings in the publication involves something about sequence, expression, and function. So we will click them here. And you have the description of what it, everything is there. Then we could add the protein names. In this case, we have the isoform. This was the short form. So we can give the specific name for the short isoform that is given in the publication. This helps to collect synonyms and names for Uniper entries when they are curated. So we can put TRPBS uh, 1S, sorry. And then we can add the information on the function that we collected from the paper. Um, this should be very short sentences and, and facts, nothing that has to do with your own opinion, whether that something is wrong or right or something. So you collect this and paste this information and you continue to do this and so on. We had some expression data here, so we're going to do that as well. So, but we can add information of other sorts. So now that we have this information in, we enter our email, our affiliation, then uh, we select to add the ORCID ID or not. The default is we, you want to show your ID, but if you prefer to remain anonymous, remember your contribution won't be citable. And then you submit. When you submit, uh, you get this uh, uh, message where you have a link to the tracking page where you can see your submissions. And here um, you have example of um, your submission that says under reviewed. So you have to wait until someone in Unipro check it to get back to it. So I'm gonna stop this and get back to the presentation. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, and I have to move forward. Okay, so once the, the thing has been checked, now it will show in the entry under community curation. When you click on community curation, now you're gonna have your information. In this case, it's already public because it has been a while, but um, you can also link to it. So our future work uh, in community submission has to do with an enhancing batch submissions. Right now, batch uh, is a little bit hidden and uh, the submission is based on um, submitting a spreadsheet with some determinate, some uh, formatting, but we wanna make sure that uh, we have good checks on the data that has been submitted. And we're learning from the users while we are doing this. Uh, we, are, we want to do some standardization when possible um, to align to Uniprot, and that will be done uh, in addition to your submission. So it, for now, it won't affect what you are submitting. Um, we want to link uh, public submissions to your ORCID profile, if you want, to give you that option, and also explore additional methods for recognition, like this uh, new... Um, a system called Apicuron that uh, provides uh, app knowledge of works of contributors to just to give you a little bit more of um, uh, exposure for your submission. I just want to say thank you to the Uniprod team. This is a gigantic group of people working on this. I highlighted the people who are involved directly in this project, myself, Hong San Juan and Yuki um, Wang uh, in the PIR side. And thanks for tuning in.